This is the story of how I became a mage in Stardew Valley. I spent the first three days doing random things like planting parsnips, fishing until I pass out, the usual stuff you would expect a perfectly sane farmer to do. This is boring, so while I do those things, let me tell you my story. Once upon a time, I had it all. A prestigious job in a top-notch corporation, a lavish lifestyle, and a promising future. Yet, deep down, I knew that something was missing. My heart yearned for a simpler, more fulfilling life. One that was far removed from the chaos and hassle of the city. My chance came unexpectedly when I inherited my grandfather's farm, a sprawling piece of land nestled in a quaint town. Before setting off to Pelican Town, I discovered that the town had a secret. A wizard who knew how to use magic. I have always been fascinated by the mystical and unexplainable, and now that I had the opportunity, I made it my mission to learn the ways of magic. My determination knew no bounds, and I hatched a plan to marry the wizard and learn the secrets of magic from him. But I knew that the road ahead was not easy. The wizard was known to be reclusive and elusive, and there were rumors that he wanted someone who had the same potential and skills as him. Someone with an inclination to the mystic arts. Someone who can tame even dragons and phoenixes. This started my journey, and I set some goals for myself. I wanted to learn all the magic spells, max out all my skills, own all types of dragons and phoenixes, brew all known potions, and marry the wizard. Anyway, I have been waiting for the spirits to be in good humor before going to the mines. I found this helpful channel on my TV and made sure to check it every day. I wanted to get to the lower levels fast to get some rare items for the wizard and I needed all the luck I can get. On my fourth day, the spirits were finally happy so I attempted to sneak into the mines. On the bus ride going to this town, I heard some tourists figured out a way to sneak past construction work to get into to the mines. It required little to no magic knowledge to perform, so I tried to do it myself. After very few tries, I was able to accomplish the trick and made it all the way to level 16 before passing out from exhaustion. This increased my mining skill to level 1. As I interact with the town people, I became aware that the fastest way to be friends with the wizard is to give him a liked or loved item twice a week, talk to him daily, and complete the quests he will post in the community board, so I kept my eyes on this board. On day 5, I harvested some parsnips and planted some more wild seeds. I sold the parsnips and used the money to buy potato seeds. The mayor told me all about the old community center and I was intrigued by some strange markings inside. I also placed a chest and furnace on the mine entrance for efficiency and managed to make it to level 30. That day, I upgraded my farming and combat skills to level 1 and my mining skills to level 2. On day 6, I received an invitation from the wizard to go to his tower. This was my chance. I took the long, scenic path to compose myself before meeting the wizard who had apparently foreseen my arrival. I gave him some quartz to hopefully make a good first impression. The spirits were in good humor so I decided to continue mining. I made it to level 42 down the mines but ran out of energy. Day 7, giving the wizard a gift worked. He helped me start my potion making journey by giving me the recipe for a simple potion called Junimo's Breath. I was ecstatic but also learned that the cold run recipe costs 5,000. I still needed to save up for it. As the spirits were mildly perturbed, I decided to spend the day collecting wood and catching fish. The following day, I gave the wizard some quartz and he warned me about a red berry that is associated with love yet harbor betrayal. It was an unlucky day so I spent most of my time fishing in the mountain and beach areas. This leveled up my fishing skill a lot. Day 9, the wizard told me about a flower with no true purpose since it's well 
well liked but unloved. It sings the blues indeed and I felt sad for this flower. I replanted some seeds and went fishing by the ocean, placing a chest near me and contemplating about the unloved flower. I passed out but I reached level 5 in fishing and decided to choose the fisher profession. The next day, Marnie came by with a cat that I named Salem. I replanted my spring seeds then gave some quartz to the wizard who told me about another plant. I continued mining until I ran out of energy at level 47. My foraging leveled up to level 3, my combat level 2, and my mining level 3. I earned 7,300 from selling all my fish that I've been hoarding for a while. I woke up on day 11 to find that I have mail. I accepted the town carpenter's quest to find her favorite axe and went to harvest my potatoes. After that, I headed to the ocean to fish and immediately sold my cash to Willie. I also asked the blacksmith to crack some geodes for me and donated the gems, minerals, and artifacts to the museum. In return, I got some cauliflower seeds. I left my pickaxe with Clint for a copper upgrade and headed to the store to upgrade my backpack. I think this guy Pierre also knows some magic since I could fit all of these items on such a small backpack. I then fished at the ocean and got a fork from a treasure chest, which I stashed in my handy dandy backpack. I gained level 2 farming and made 3000 gold from selling potatoes and fish. On day 12, I received 500 gold from my dad and replanted my spring seeds. I also bought a rare seed from the traveling merchant. After heavily contemplating between that and the coffee bean. The wizard told me to be at peace, so I started swinging my axe all around the forest. I fished until midnight, earning 1,300 from my catches. The next day was the egg festival and I bought 50 strawberry seeds. I tried to look for the wizard to say hi, but couldn't find him anywhere. However, I did get 9 eggs and won the tournament, winning a straw hat as my reward, so I was happy. I planted the strawberries before heading to bed. Bad. On day 14, I claimed my copper pickaxe and saw that my farm actually has its own quarry guarded by this statue. I also discovered that the water in the valley has some unique properties which replenishes my health and energy. After taking a quick soak in my bathtub, I went mining with my fork and newly upgraded pickaxe. I reached level 60 and got level 4 mining. The spirits were in good humor on day 15, so I got ready to finish the mines by bathing with my clothes on. I ran out of energy at level 79, just one level away from the level with an elevator. But at least I got a solar essence. Based from its energy, I think the wizard would like this item. I made it back to bed and gained level 3 combat. On day 16, I woke up early to give the solar essence to the wizard. My guts told me this item is powerful and I knew that he would appreciate it. I was right. After giving him the essence, I went to the museum to donate some items. I got some melon seeds, a starfruit seed, and some furniture in return. After that, I asked Clint to upgrade my axe to copper. While walking around the town, I heard a rumor about a certain profitable recipe that Caroline gives to her friends. I decided to talk to and start befriending her. I gave her some daffodils and made a mental note to continue doing so. It was the start of salmon berry season, so I got some additional food supply. I continued mining and reached level 80, where I got firewalker boots. I continued until level 82, getting void essence in the process, which has the opposite energy from the solar essence, but I could feel it has the same amount of power, so I know the wizard will love it too. Since I already had a gift to give for Smojus, yes, we are first name basis now. I decided to spend the rest of my time on the lower levels to gather copper ores. On day 17, I woke up to find that I had earned 350 gold from random completed quests. I replanted some more spring seeds, then gave the void essence to the wizard. As expected, he also loves it. After that, I went to the mines. I reached level 5 mining and chose the miner profession. The next day, 
I claimed my copper axe from Clint. It was the last day of salmon berry season, so I collected as much as I could around the forest and also found the carpenter's axe. Since I was already around the area, I said hi to the wizard who told me about the brown tuber that can save and crush nations. I got level 4 foraging and earned 1,800 from selling minerals. On day 19, I harvested some forageables and replanted spring seeds again. I needed money for a coop, so I sold some spring seeds until I got 4,000. Afterwards, I asked Robin to build me a coop and I went down the mines completely forgetting to give Robin her axe back. <laughs> After about an hour, I remembered it and gave it to Robin, earning 250. I spent the rest of the day mining and fishing by the beach. I upgraded the fishing to level 6 and earned 1,300 from my catches. Finally, on day 20, I got a quest from the wizard to slay two ghosts. This was my chance to prove my strength, so I went to the mines and slayed two ghosts. I completed the quest, but sadly, I couldn't feel that the the wizard is warming up to me yet. However, I gained level 4 combat so I'm not complaining. I woke up on day 21 feeling excited to see my strawberry plants had finally grown ripe for harvest. After gathering all the strawberries, I decided to make a trip to the traveling cart where I got a starfruit seed and a rare seed. I also gave a solar essence to Rasmojus who was finally starting to warm up to me. He told me a wise saying, not all flowers are loved, where some see a rose others see only thorns. I then headed to the mines and managed to reach level 85, collecting ores as I went down. I ended up leveling up my farming skill all the way to level 4 that day. I also got 6,200 gold from the strawberries. On day 22, Demetrius arrived to set up a mushroom cave. In the mail, I received a new potion recipe for Forager's Filter from the wizard. I also got another quest from him to slay two squid kids, which I was determined to complete. As I headed to give a daffodil to Caroline, she walked away from me, leaving me feeling rejected and unwanted. In the mines, I managed to reach level 90 and even got an obsidian edge. However, I didn't find a single squid kid. At level 91, I finally managed to slay one of them, but had to back out due to low health. With no time left, I just went to bed and got my mining skill to level 6. Day 23 started off with harvesting cauliflowers. In the mines, I finally managed managed to slay another squid kid at level 93, so I went to the wizard to complete his quest, but ended up getting a cutscene where he asked me if I had seen an elemental. Apparently, it was different from a slime or the things I saw in the old community center. And he said that they have taken an interest in my fate. He then went on to say that whenever a spirit takes interest, so must we all. Was this his way of telling me he has an interest in me? Although I finished his quest, I remained at level 2 friendship with him, so I decided to give him a solar essence, hoping to gain more friendship points. The wizard then told me, to some, the powers at my disposal must be perplexing, yet I am not the only one who can use such energies. Anyone with the will to believe and follow their path can tap a source of energy far greater than seen here, but most do not wish to see it. This left me wondering when he will notice my burning curiosity to learn the unknown powers in this world. Day 24 was the flower dance festival and I was excited to attend. I harvested my last batch of spring forageables and collected mushrooms for the first time since unlocking the cave. At the festival, I bought a rare crow just because it was cute and 5 dandelions because because I was missing some more to craft spring seeds. I knew that I would be better liked by everyone if I met everyone in town, so I went around and introduced myself to all of them and saw their really cute outfits. I stared longingly at the only person I had the chance to dance with while he watched the event from the top of a hill. 
I stood and watched alone while the other townsfolk danced with each other. I also placed the rare crow beside another scarecrow and they looked really cute together. On day 25, I had my last strawberry harvest based from its pattern, so I only watered the remaining spring seeds. I placed the third scarecrow behind the duo so he could see how alone he was. I finally met everyone in town and this gave me three hearts with Rasmo. We are now on a nickname basis. I sold my strawberries to Pierre and bought 4 chickens and 50 hay from the ranch. I said hi to the chicks and discovered an area under the mushroom cave, which was the perfect place to take a bath. I emerged from the bath feeling powerful and ready to learn the secrets of magic. I gained level 5 farming and earned 1300 from fishing. I woke up on day 26 feeling very excited. I just knew it was gonna be a good day. I quickly harvested the last forage of balls, then continued to the wizard's tower where he was waiting for me. He said he adjusted the Yoba altar for me to use and started to teach me the basics of arcane magic. He also also gave me a hint to try using the analyze spell on my watering can. I looked around for Yoba's altar and found it inside Pierre's shop. There, I learned a few spells. Analyze, which I can use to examine an item for magical inspiration. Magic missile, a weak but seeking projectile. Enchant, which is used to raise quality of an object and uses money. And disenchant, which lowers quality of an object and gives money. I followed the wizard's tip and used analyze on my tool. It worked! I learned a new spell, clear debris, and equipped it immediately. After that, I sold all of my old weapons and shoes to Marlon and bought a recipe for a travel core. I wasn't sure what it was for, but it was cheap, so I figured I might as well get it. Next. I went to the mines to test out my new spells. Clear debris destroys all the stones, wood, and fiber from an area, and the magic missiles go straight to the monsters and damages them quite a bit. These are so helpful for navigating inside the mines. I reached level 99 but unfortunately had to retreat. I was so curious what's on level 100 but I didn't want to pass out. I leveled up my magic to 1 and combat skills to 5 and chose the fighter profession. On day 27, I tried using the spell Enchant on my gold quality daffodil, which raised its quality to iridium in exchange for some gold. This spell would be helpful for befriending people since they all seem to prefer higher quality materials. After that, I equipped a new spell, Lantern, which I learned from randomly using Analyze on a torch. I also upgraded my magic missile spell to level 2. I was having so much fun with my new spells and I was eager to be a better mage Age, so I bought the recipe for a cauldron. Since I was already at Clint's, I also asked him to crack open some geodes and donated stuff to the museum. I got pumpkin seeds and some decor which I placed in my house. I crafted the cauldron and immediately brewed the Junimo's breath potion. It looks almost too cute to drink. After that, I went to the mines and reached level 100. I got a star drop which reminded me to subscribe. I continued until level 105 before I called it a Day, leveling up my magic skill and earning 200 gold from some minerals. On day 28, I got curious and crafted a travel core, which I found out I could eat. This might be helpful if I ran out of food down the mines. I collected the eggs from my chickens and apparently, I have 3 golden chickens. Must be magic? I then crafted 4 mayonnaise machines and processed the eggs. After that, I gave the travel core to the wizard, thinking it's two of his loved items combined, so he must love it too. However, he was so disappointed with my gift that it turned his hair violet. To make it up to him, I put a chest in his house to store solar and void essence, so I will always be prepared to give him a loved gift. It was the last day of the season, so I spent the day foraging. I gave Caroline an iridium daffodil, which in enabled me to enter her secret tea room and we had some fun inside. Then, using my awesome magic spells, I reached level 110 in the mines and got some space boots. I went back to my farm and started lighting it up with my lantern spell. Unfortunately, I got too caught up doing this and passed out. At least I reached level 5 in foraging and became a forester. On the first day of summer, I received a tea sapling recipe from the mail. This must be the profitable item everyone was whispering 
spring about in town, I quickly crafted 57 tea saplings and sold them to pair along with my mayonnaise. I ended up with 35,000 gold in my pockets. I used some of the money to buy hop starters, blueberry, and hot pepper seeds. After that, I went to Clint to upgrade my pickaxe to iron and asked Robin to build me a barn. I earned 2,500 gold from my mayonnaise. It seems that one golden egg produces three gold quality mayonnaise. On day 30, I visited the wizard and gave him a gift. I noticed that this time he turned his hair red. I also equipped the till spell using the Yoba altar. I got this one from analyzing my hoe. I reached level 120 in the mines and got a skull key. I also leveled up my magic, mining, and combat skills. Day 31, I happily noticed that my mana supply was getting larger. I just need to continue training. I got a quest to find the mayor's lucky purple shorts, then cleaned my steel pickaxe from Clint. I was able to craft and sell 25 tea saplings, earning almost 17,000 gold along with my mayonnaise and gems. On day 32, I remembered to plant the melon seeds and starfruit seeds I had in my inventory. I easily cleared the farm quarry using the clear debris spell and donated items to the museum getting a rare crow as a reward. I asked Clint to upgrade my axe to iron after he cracked some more geodes open for me. Then, I discovered that Jojo Corporation my previous company had a supermarket here. The manager, Morris, offered to make town improvements if I became a member of their store. I know that the company is reliable, so I agreed and became a member. That day, I reached magic level 4 and earned 2,700 gold from my mayonnaise. This is going to be a constant source of income. Day 33, I asked Robin to upgrade my barn into a big barn so I could buy larger animals. I got tempted to buy paint and all the cute furniture to make my farm look pretty, but I remembered that I am not yet rich, so instead, I went to Georgia to ask them to fix the minecarts that I keep seeing around town. Back in my farm, I removed the boulder from a lake and discovered the water there also had regenerative properties. The next day, I harvested hot peppers and placed the scarecrows on different plots of land so everyone was equally lonely this time. I was able to remove the boulders previously blocking my farmland so I expanded it more and planted some summer seeds. Clint finally finished my steel axe and I used it to gather wood from the forest which leveled up my foraging skill to level 6. I started day 35 by destroying the stumps on my farm for some hardwood. Finally, my barn was ready to accommodate dragons. So I bought one and named it Raya. I also bought more hay and two cows as feed for the dra- I mean for investment. I went to the traveling cart and wanted to buy a coffee bean this time, but I was already broke so I just used my remaining money to buy a milk pail. I gave the wizard a solar essence and wondered if he would teach me how to change hairstyle and color at will. I learned another spell named Tendrils from analyzing a crop, and I got a living hat from the mines. So I removed my witch hat for a bit to enjoy having a plant on my head. I crafted more tea saplings from the fiber I collected down the mines and earned 30,000 that day, mostly just from the tea saplings. Day 36, I went to Pierre's and remembered I was there to equip my newly learned spell, Tendrils, which can stop foes in their paths. I gave white essence to the wizard and got level 4 friendship with him. I was one step closer to learning all his secrets. I tried using the tendril spell on a foe. The slime stopped in its tracks and couldn't reach me, but the other monsters could still damage me. It's a cool spell, but I'm not particularly fond of it. I leveled up my magic to level 5 and chose mana regen because I was always running out of mana. I earned almost 8,000 since I decided to sell some of my gold bars that day. On day 37, the wizard sent me another letter with a new potion recipe. He said it would help me have a good night's sleep. I couldn't wait to try it out since I always get nightmares. I then put tappers in an oak and a maple tree since I needed honey for the new potion. That day, I gained level 8 mining and level 6 farming, allowing me to craft quality sprinklers. The next day, I planted my poppy seeds and placed sprinklers. I filled the rest of the area with more summer seeds since I already have sprinklers to water it. Then, 
I went to Robin to upgrade my coop to a big one. Day 39 was the day of the Luau festival. The mayor asked me to bring something nice to put into the town soup that we were gonna make. I suddenly remembered the quest and decided to summon Mayor Louis Pants using magic with some mischievous thoughts. However, after heavy contemplation, I realized I needed to put something nice in the soup to increase my friendship with the wizard. He might hate me if he realized I put someone's shorts in the soup. With that in mind, I raised my strawberries quality to a region level using the spell enchant and headed to the festival where I saw that Pierre was giving out some decorations for free. Unfortunately, I didn't have a lot of space so I had to only pick a few. I walked around, talked to, and appreciated the villagers' cute summer outfits before I added the strawberry to the soup. The governor and everyone else seemed to enjoy the soup so I went home feeling good and placed my free furniture around the farm and my house. The next morning, I harvested my crops and planted more trees for sustainability. To my surprise, I learned some new spells by analyzing my watering can again. I discovered water spell and an ancient spell called blink. So I went to Pierre's shop, bought some melon seeds and looked at my new spells. I equipped water level 2 spell and blink which apparently allows me to teleport. I rushed home to test my water spell which made watering a breeze. I planted the seeds and placed sprinklers before heading to bed. Day 41, my cows were all grown up and started producing milk so I made two cheese press for it. After a trip down the mines, instead of taking the minecarts, I decided to try Blink, and to my surprise, it teleported me into the void. Luckily, I was able to jump back. That gave me a good scare. I saw a part of Cindersub Forest that I haven't accessed before and collected some hardwood there before I noticed that it was 1am. I used Blink to rush back home and I was able to make it back with plenty of time to spare. I also harvested the summer seeds that day and used it to craft tea saplings which gave me around 8,500 profit that day, giving me enough money to unlock the bus. I also increased my magic and combat levels. I woke up the next day to a nice surprise. My dragon was fully grown. My blueberries were also ready for their first harvest. This gave me a lot of profit. But more importantly, my dragon was fully grown. After appreciating my dragon for a while, I realized I could use the blink spell somewhere else. Since I already summoned a copy, might as well get the original shorts to add to my collection, just in case I needed to blackmail the mayor or something. I went to give a gift to the wizard and he said, I believe you to be a good person, Mirabels, so the shrine should be kind to you. If I misjudged you, then you might still be fine, I'll have to see. I walked away, slowly contemplating my plans and thoughts and what the shrine might do to me. I decided to leave this problem to future me, so I went to the saloon to buy 15 salads. It will serve as my food supply as I start my journey down the Skull Cavern. The trip got a bit easier using my spells, but I wasn't lucky that day and had to retreat, reaching only level 16. I learned a new spell by analyzing an earth crystal, shockwave, and another ancient spell called photosynthesis. Day 43, I saw that my dragon left me a maple syrup. I harvested my crops and got a quest from the wizard to slay two ghosts and of course, I was determined to do it. I also went to Yulba's altar to check my new spells and I got shockwave, which will make me jump into the air and slam down. And another spell called photosynthesis, which will advance all my plants, but it would cost a prismatic shard per use. Thrilled about my new spells, I went to the mines to check out shockwave and it was so fun to do. While down there, I also slain some ghosts for the wizard. Rasmo and the elementals were pleased and I also gave him a loved gift, determined to learn more of his secrets. I leveled up my magic, farming, and mining skills that day. On day 44, I got curious and decided to use Analyze spell on all my clothing and learned evac from my boots. After that, I went outside and saw that one of my blueberry crops got struck by lightning, so I crafted some lightning rods. I harvested melon and hops, then spent some time down the mines. 
While mining, the deep red lava caught my attention, so I used Analyze on the water and learned the Blood Mana spell. The next day, my starfruit, poppy, forageables, and hops were all ripe for harvest. Then, I remembered that my mountain dragon gave me a maple syrup, so I used it to craft a bee house. I went to town and paid Morius to fix the greenhouse before heading to the desert. I went to Skull Cavern again and reached level 40, where I learned the spell Descent. I had a dream that night and saw Morris repairing the greenhouse in my farm. I also leveled up my magic and foraging. The next morning, Mr. Key gave me 10,000 gold for making it far into the Skull Cavern. I haven't heard of Mr. Key before coming into town. He seems more powerful than Rasmo and more mysterious. I have to find this person and talk to him. I then met a girl named Sandy in the desert and she sold me some starfruit seeds which I planted inside my new greenhouse. Since I learned a lot of new spells lately, I went to Yoba's altar and equipped the sand, which will allow me to go down several levels in the mines, and blood mana, which will use my health to replenish mana. I also learned that Eva teleports me to where I entered an area, but decided that I don't need it. I was thinking I was rich, so I upgraded my backpack to have 36 slots and went to buy some salads to take with me on my mining trip and realized I was not that rich after all. Day 47, I went to Skull Cavern early and used the scent spell all the way to level 55. I gathered lots of Iridium Mores and 4 Prismatic Shards. Out of all the minerals I found, this shard has the most interesting energy so far. I reached level 100 and got an Auto Grabber. I didn't want to push my luck anymore, so I backed away. On the way back to the bus, I felt a pull from my Prismatic Shards, wanting me to go to the Pillars, so I went there and got a Galaxy Sword. Since I got a lot of good stuff from the cavern, I used Anna on most of it and learned fireball from fire quartz. I placed the auto grabber inside my barn before going to bed and leveling up my mining skill to 10 which increases the value of my metal bars. Day 48, I earned a lot of money from selling tea saplings, gold bars, and extra minerals. I had some money again, so I splurged by asking Robin to upgrade my house and buying more salad. Since the spirits were in good humor, I equipped Fireball and continued my Skull Cavern journey. Fireball is stronger than Magic Missile spell, but I need to properly aim it at enemies. One of the monsters I killed dropped a life elixir. I used Analyzed on it and learned a healing spell. Utilizing all my magical abilities, I reached level 100 easily and got a pomegranate sapling. I also collected 4 prismatic shards and a lot of iridium ores which I turned into bars before selling, earning me 21,000. My magic and combat levels also increased. The next morning, I gave void essence to Rasmo before buying a radioactive dragon from Marnie and just look at them! I then went to Morris and paid him for panning improvement. I didn't know what it meant, but I wanted to improve the town as much as I could. After that, I grinded more in the skull cavern and got another 4 prismatic shards. The spirits really bless me with good fortune when they are happy. That night, I earned 50,000 just from iridium bars, reached level 8 farming, and dreamt about Morris again. On day 50, I finally harvested some honey and crafted a sleeping draught. I haven't been getting enough sleep lately and I kept on dreaming about Morris, so I drank the potion right away, hoping for a whole day of sleep. However, it only damaged me a bit. Sadly, I think I was already too powerful for the potion to work on me. I asked Morris to do the last town upgrade, then planted all the rare seeds I've been collecting inside my greenhouse. I filled the rest of the space with starfruit that I bought from Sandy earlier. I equipped a new spell, photosynthesis, and sacrificed a prismatic shard to advance the stage of my crops. I planted the pomegranate sapling, then called it a day, earning 62,000 for my crop harvest, iridium bars, and battery packs. I woke up to a bigger house and I tried my best to decorate it. Then, I harvested blueberries, hot peppers, hops, and melons. I wanted oak resins to craft kegs, so I sacrificed my prismatic shard to make my oak trees grow faster and placed tappers on the fully grown ones. 
I was pleasantly surprised to see that my crops were also ready for harvest again because of the spell. This bumped my farming to level 9 and my total earning that day to 80,000. Day 52, I got a letter from the wizard who admitted that he isn't good at making friends, but he has a potion that's useful for it. The name of the potion is Amortentia, which eerily sounds like a very strong love potion. I went to town deep in thought about the potions that Rasmo was brewing when I was interrupted by Morris, telling me that they are finally turning the old rusty community center into something useful. It was nice to hear that I contributed to this accomplishment and they gave me a soda machine for it. I saw that I was rich already, so I bought some wood to upgrade my coop into a deluxe one. I also bought six more dragons. A river, pond, mountain, abyss, lava, and storm dragon. I ran out of space and I had to sell my cows, but there are still more dragon types. So, I made a note to further increase my barn capacity. I maximized my magic skill that day and chose additional mana reserve. I also earned 15,000 mostly from tea saplings. Day 53, Gunter surprised me. He got out for the first time and gave me an old rusty key for my contributions to the museum. Weedy also sent me a letter telling me to visit visit his shop. That day, I found out that Frasmo used to be married, but he made a mistake and his wife's anger and jealousy turned her green and vile, so he had to seal the passage to her home. However, he needs to remove this seal now so he can retrieve his magic ink that his ex-wife took. He seemed so uncomfortable telling me all of this that his hair changed color several times during our conversation. On day 54, I harvested a red cabbage and I had a very strong vision that I needed this item in a past life. I harvested more crops while I remained lost in this thought. Afterwards, I went to Marnie to buy phoenixes. I got all variations, regular, ashen, iridium, blue, emerald, and a golden phoenix. I then bought more wood to upgrade my barn to a deluxe one. I finally had some spare time to visit Willy and saw that he had an old boat at the back room of his shop. He wanted to repair it but he needed some iridium bars, battery packs, and hardwood for it. So I went back home and placed more lightning rods for battery packs. I had enough iridium bars so I started collecting hardwood to complete the materials as soon as possible. At long last, I had enough money and a greenhouse to buy both coffee bean and rare seed from the traveling cart. The next morning, I planted mahogany seeds and more acorn seeds. I cast the photosynthesis spell again and most of my acorn trees became fully grown. I also got to harvest a lot of my crops that day because of it. This increased my farming skill to maximum. I chose the artisan profession and got 71,000 profit. I bought more starfruit from Sandy and replanted it back at my greenhouse. Then, I crafted some kegs and processed my regular quality starfruit, selling the high quality ones. Day 56, I gave another void essence to Rasmo who is currently trying to break free from a slump he has been on because of the past. You got this, Rasmo. I wanted to increase my foraging level, so I went around town foraging and chopping trees. Then I decided to visit the quarry for the first time. I mildly remember Morris repairing this in one of my nightmares. Speaking of, my dreams haven't appeared in a while, so maybe that sleeping drought worked after all. I also wanted to prove my worth further by increasing my combat skills, so I started using my sword when collecting coal and ores down the mines. It was the night of the moonlight jellies, so I went to the beach to celebrate and I forgot that Pierre gives free furniture during festivals. I could only fit two more items in my magical backpack, so I chose some hanging decorations. Afterwards, I went around the beach and socialized a bit before I finally found Rasmo at a corner who told me not to lurk in the shadows. The audacity! I watched the moonlight jellies with everyone, reminiscing about my journey here in Pelican Town. 
I am so close to achieving my goals and I wondered what was next for me. I reached level 8 foraging that day. It was the first day of fall and my phoenixes were fully grown. They dropped some colorful feathers for me which I immediately sold. I also got a radioactive core and a rainbow shell for my radioactive and pond dragon respectively. After that, I bought a lot of cranberry seeds and equipped my teal and water spell to make planting faster. I was on the way to the woods to gather more hardwood when I saw Jazz, who looked like a pink elf. Is it just me? Anyway, I used photosynthesis again to make my crops grow faster and when I checked my greenhouse, my sweet gem berry and pomegranate tree were ready to be harvested. I had all the materials so I brewed an Amortensia potion and planned to give it to the wizard. My investment in rare seeds paid off and I got 40,000 from sweet gem berries and tea saplings. The next day, I gave the Amortensia to Rasmo. He seems to know that I gave him a love potion since he told me, If you find yourself obsessed with something you've never been interested before, it can mean you have been enchanted. Well, I think it worked anyways. In any case, I crafted more kegs and continued processing my low quality starfruit before heading to town where I saw Robin and Louis putting up a community board for quests. I accepted the quest to gather 1,000 stones and continued to the beach, wanting to increase my fishing skills. I opted to buy an iridium fishing rod with a spinner and put some bait in before I started fishing. After a few hours, I got bored and started strolling around. I discovered a new cave by the quarry and spent some time gathering stones for the quest. I got a golden sight at the end of this cave. Before heading home, I caught Rasmo and Linus talking about someone interfering with the flow of nature, and it seems like they were talking about me. I was told that both of them have noticed the way the energies swirl about me. Rasmo then asked me what I will do since I hold fate in my hands. Okay, this was not in my plan when I moved here. I just wanted magic. I don't want anything to do with this. He says I must choose nevertheless though. The pressure, sheesh. I went to sleep troubled by what I learned. A fairy seems to have noticed and they paid me a visit and used some magic similar to photosynthesis in some of my cranberries. I also leveled up my combat skills. Day 59, I got some new items from my fully grown dragons. I got the Void Essence from a beast, Omni Geode from Mountain, and Battery Pack from Storm. After staring at my dragons in awe, I went to Marnie to buy a pig just in case my dragons want a different kind of diet. I also bought 3 more dragons, Celestial, Flower, and Pygmy. Then, I had a chat with Rasmo and discovered that he has some jealousy problems, especially when his partner has strong energies. Looks like I will have to divorce this guy once I become stronger. I also went to Robin to place an additional shipping bean near my barn and coop. I asked her to build a silo too. At last, I collected all the materials to repair Willy's boat. I gave 200 hardwood, 5 iridium bars, and 5 battery packs. Willy and Robin repaired the boat while I waited patiently, excited about the new adventures I'll have. Day 60, I expanded my farming plots to plant pumpkin and eggplant seeds. After doing my dailies, I eagerly rode the boat for 1000. It took me to another island where I saw and accidentally scared a boy. I saw something interesting on top of the cliff, so I teleported there and got a golden walnut. Curious about the boy, I followed him all the way to his house, gathering more walnuts along the way. In the boy's house, I saw a parrot who asked me for a walnut so I gave it one. The boy still seems shy and hesitant, but it was apparent that he approves of me being friendly with the parrots. I left him alone and went around the open parts of the island, collecting walnuts from the ground and trees. I got 12 before I decided to enter the volcano where I trained my combat skills more. I gave 10 walnuts to a parrot to wake up the tortoise blocking this way before going home. Day 61 Since I have a silo, I started to site the grass to store hay. I cleaned up the farm and started placing some pathways so the trees will not spread too much. Then. 
I asked Robin to build me another barn since there seems to be more dragon types than the ones I currently have. While collecting some wood, I remembered I had a rusty key. I used it to go down the sewers where I met Krobus, who told me I needed to explore the tunnel for the Dark Talisman. I bought a star drop which reminded me to subscribe before I went inside the tunnel where I saw lots of fiber and bugs. I eventually reached the end where there's a treasure chest containing the dark talisman. I used the talisman to unlock the entrance to the witch's lair only to be stopped by a henchman who didn't want to lose their job. The next morning, my cranberries were ready for its first harvest. I harvested them, then used my photosynthesis spell for a double harvest. My starfruit and coffee plant in the greenhouse also became ripe for harvest because of my OP spell. I bought more seeds from Sandy and replanted some starfruit seeds, but I wasn't able to fill the area because they got broke again. There was nothing to worry about though, since I earned 147,000 that day, majority from my double harvest. Day 63, since I had money again, I made sure to stock up on starfruit seeds and filled up my greenhouse. I also planted an ancient seed, which I got as a reward from the museum. It was the final day to collect 1,000 stones for Robin, so I went to the quarry and mines and eventually completed the quest. I woke up on day 64 with a letter from Robin, who taught me how to craft a stone chest for completing her quest. My eggplant was also ready for its first harvest. After taking care of my farm, I gave Rasmo another void essence and he warned me about falling because this is a time of enchantment. It seems that some energies from the trees can have strange effects on people, so I asked him to be my boyfriend and he agreed. I also caught Rasmo getting frustrated over his work that day. He was trying to harness artificial energies since he has not been sleeping lately. He asked me what I do when I cannot fall asleep. Bad decision to ask me to be honest, but I just told him I lie under the stars since it seemed to be the most interesting answer. He then continued and told me he is doomed to work until he succeeds or falls into his own cauldron. Based from my own experience, a little break can sometimes refresh the mind for the better and sometimes we just need a reminder to take a breather so I asked him to rest to which he agreed. He fell asleep the moment he hit the bed. I then asked Robin to upgrade my barn into big barn. After trial and error, I was able to bribe the henchman with some void mail and I was able to enter the witch's hut and get Rasmo's magic ink. I stared at the statues inside her house and learned the spell Lock Still from the Dark Shrine of Selfishness. I gave the ink back to the wizard who seems a little too concerned if his ex-wife is seeing someone new. He really acted like this on the day he became my boyfriend? Anyway, the ink made new buildings available for construction like this Junimo hut. Day 65, I got the recipe for a new potion called Felix's Tonic from the mail. I looked at my potion recipes and realized I haven't crafted Forager's filter yet and I needed some fiddlehead fern for it. I also needed some solar essence, gold bar, and topaz for Felix Stonic. I made a note to find these on my next mining trips. After that, I went to Rasmo and snooped around his room. I found a radio which gave me hints about how to learn the rest of the spells. On day 66, I heard a hint from the radio saying I should try and study ice from something. Then, I saw a really cute hat from a mouse entrepreneur and just had to buy and wear it for a bit. I also bought a sky, specter, face, crystal, and time dragon that day. The next day, I completed my dragon collection with a creek dragon. Day 68, since I already had a source of constant income, I started hoarding some furniture. I bought a catalog and also started buying recipes for decorations. I got another quest to slay a ghost from Rasmo so I went mining. After a few hours, I managed to slay a ghost and I finally got a topaz. I crafted Felix's 
Lapis Tonic which gives plus 1 mining and plus 2 luck. I continued mining in Skull Cavern and got 3 Rain Totems, an Auto Grabber and Fiddle Head Ferns. I brewed Forager's Filter which gives luck and foraging boost. Day 69, I reported the completed quest to Resmo who says he needs to go out more. The next morning, I crafted lots of kegs and started processing some coffee. I harvested pumpkins and got surprised with a pearl from one of my dragons. They dropped some rare items from time to time. I then gave another gift to Rasmo, who told me his version of with great power comes great responsibility. I asked him to build me a Junimo hut which annoyingly cannot be centered in my plots of land. I ended up buying two and placed them like this but I was not happy at all. On the bright side, I learned haste and buff spells from analyzing coffee. Buff improves every facet of my being while haste allows me to move faster. I still needed to level up my combat skills so I went mining in Skull Cavern where I tried buff. It increases a lot of my skill levels, making my tasks so much easier. On day 71, I finally reached max affection with Rasmo. I gravely recall the love potion I gave him as he said, Enchantments, energies, and experiments. Though their powers are great and can do many things, they can't solve all of life's problems. They cannot, for example, make someone fall in love with another and have it be an honest relationship. It never ends well. I tried to get rid of these thoughts by fighting enemies at the volcano until I reached level 10 combat. I cooled down before heading back home by fishing where I learned the spells Frostbolt and teleport from an ice pip. I chose the brute profession for combat and gained level 7 fishing. Day 72, I got two letters from Rasmo. One contains the Cloak of Moonlight potion recipe which will allow me to face dark forces and the other is a more personal letter asking me to meet him at the Hidden Woods. It was the fall festival and I prepared trimmed purple shorts, purple shorts, sweet jamberry, truffle, pale ale, prismatic shard, iridium bar, radioactive bar, and just to make sure Louis gives me what I want, a mega bomb. I went around to see the cute fall outfits as usual and saw Rasmo talking about Wellwig. I was getting worried and jealous but he immediately clarified that she was just a friend. I won the festival as planned and got 750 tokens. I bet almost everything twice at the roulette and got enough money to buy a star drop. The Junimos harvested most of my crops but because of the weird placement, I needed to manually harvest a few. I made sure to use the rain totem before sleeping since I heard I can find a special pendant during rainy days which I can use to propose. I got 52,000 from that day's harvest but I accidentally sold all my bombs. On day 73, I claimed my gold axe and bought a mermaid's pendant. I had a date with Rasmo at the secret woods where he admitted that he thought he can never get over his ex-wife. But now, he only cares for me. He says I have enchanted him. I told him I felt the same way and asked him to marry me. He said yes and to give him 3 days for all the arrangements. I spent the rest of the day chopping down trees and leveled up my foraging skill to level 9. The next day, I crafted more mega bombs since I accidentally sold my bombs before going down the mines again. On day 75, I saw something interesting near the sewers in Cindersap Forest and teleported my way down there. I got an Iridium Crow. Was. It was really cute. On fall 20, it was finally time for my wedding. Rasmo officially became my husband and he moved in with me. I already got annoyed with him during our first day together. He just placed his stuff in the middle of some of my furniture and even put a one-way teleportation system to his tower. I asked Robin to upgrade my barn to a deluxe one to cool down before spending my first night with my husband. On day 77, I fished for trash from spa waters for Linus quest to clean up the town. I went around town and this was the spot with the most trash. I am very much concerned about the spa's cleanliness now. While fishing, 
I contemplated about my goals in this town and I realized I wanted to be rich so I added a goal to have 1 million gold in my pockets before the year ends. I managed to complete the community cleanup quest before going back to my farm where I used magic to have a double harvest of cranberries. This bumped up that day's earnings to 156,000 gold. The next morning, I got the fiber seed recipe from Linus, so I went ahead and planted hundreds of those in my farm. Since I wanted more money, I added some kegs. Then, after 78 days in this town, I found out that I can actually just buy coals from Clint. I spent the next three days maximizing profit from animals, crops, and artisan goods. I also collected more geodes for a Celestine. Then, I harvested thousands of fibers, which I kept for future use. Day 82, I finally found a Celestine from an Omni Geode. I used it to brew Cloak of Moonlight Potion, which completed my potion collection. Day 83 was the Spirit's Eve Festival, so I went around and said hi to the villagers. They were all wearing awesome Halloween costumes. I felt a bit out of place, but remembered that I'm a farmer who is dressed like a mage. The next day was the last day of fall, so I used my photosynthesis spell as much as I could to make the most of my cranberry plants. I did this repeatedly up to 4 p.m. Honestly, I should have continued to get more money, but I got bored, so I went around chopping trees instead. I earned almost 200,000 from my harvest. On the first day of winter, my husband changed his hair color to blue, which was appropriate for the season. I added Junimo huts to my farm, two for each plot of land since it was annoyingly not symmetrical. I put iridium sprinklers around them and planted 10 winter wild seeds, which I crafted from some items I foraged. Day 86, the wizard told me he doesn't remember his real name. All this time, I thought Trasmodius was his name. Maybe that's his surname. Anyway, I placed stone paths around my farming area and fished for the rest of the day. On day 87, I managed to gather more forageables, which I crafted into 20 more wild seeds. I planted all of it and used photosynthesis twice. I spent the day fishing before I fell asleep while placing down more paths in my farm. I reached level 8 fishing that day. The next morning, I found out that my husband didn't notice that I passed out right outside our house. Someone else found me and took me to Dr. Harvey where I was billed 1000 gold. So much for being a powerful, all-seeing wizard, huh? I went to have some retail therapy because of this. I had 960,000 gold, so close to 1 million, but I went and bought a furniture catalog. I also stocked up on hay, which depleted a lot of my money. To make sure I'll still earn 1 million gold before the end of the year, I bought more starfruit seeds. Then, I continued harvesting and replanting my winter forageables and continued to do so all throughout the next days. I also decorated my house starting with a cozy corner to watch my non-existent fish. Day 89, I placed some fence around my barn and coop area. On day 90, I started clearing my ginger island farm more. I placed sprinklers, then planted pineapple, ancient, and starfruit seeds with the help of magic. I spent the rest of the day chopping down trees, making me advance to level 10 foraging where I chose the tapper profession. To reach all my goals before the end of the year, I still needed to have 1 million gold in my pockets and reach max level for fishing. So. I spent the next few days focusing on those while also decorating my house and farm. I used photosynthesis a lot of times to harvest a lot of starfruit and winter forageables. I also continued adding kegs in order to produce more pale ale and wine. Additionally, I planted some fiber so I can craft enough tea saplings. On day 95, after what felt like hours of endless fishing, I got my fishing level to 9. Day 96, I received a letter from Rasmo asking for a void essence to use in some dark divination technique. I gave him one and he rewarded me with a star drop. On day 98, I finished decorating my house. I am quite happy with it. I dedicated my attic for studying magic and brewing potions. Day 99, 
all my hard work and investment finally paid off. I had 1.2 million gold in my pockets and around 3 million total earnings. I reached level 10 fishing on winter 20. Then, I continued improving my farm over the last few days of the year. Let me show you how my farm looks now. In just one year, I accomplished what others could only dream of. I became a powerful mage farmer, learning all the magic spells, maxing out all my skills, taming all known dragons and phoenixes, brewing all potions, and even marrying the wizard. But I am not content. I know that there is more to learn, more power to be gained. I am really interested in someone named Mr. Chi. He is said to be a master of magic and he is rumored to have secrets that could unlock even greater power for me. Maybe I'll tell you about my next adventure another time. Goodbye for now!